Law Enforcement Live is filmed live with the men and women of law enforcement. All participants in tonight's show are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Viewer discretion is advised. Happy 4th of July from all of us here at TV10. Happy birthday, America. After dark, what we're going to go to is fireworks and blimps. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. It started last night as soon as the sun went down. Wednesday night wasn't bad, but last night and uh, tonight and tomorrow night. How's, I heard you guys are using drones now to catch people in the, in the city doing the illegal fireworks. That would be city police doing that. Uh, city police doing that? Yeah. I've seen drones around, but I don't know if they're there or they're flying. Sergeant Yoda, uh, in patrol, they been here seven years ago. Just made local after four years, and they just pulled up to someone at the beginning of the year. So, nice. Okay, so you just oversee the guys and check their reports, and make sure the schedule's scored well, field any kind of complaints that the public might have. I'm very pleased with the entire department in terms of in terms of any kind of complaints or anything like that. And we really haven't had to handle any. And the ones that we do handle, you know, big help has been being issued body cameras, being able to, being able to review everything right there on video and audio and then see exactly what happened. Um, these body cameras largely exonerate our officers from any kind of complaints. So I think we've got a good group of guys. Did you mean corporal in four years? Yeah, um, and then I held that position for a little over two years. I really took on that role at the beginning of the year. Um, Seeing this job is like something that comes natural for you? I mean, I've always wanted to do it. Uh, I have fun. Every day is different. I never, wanted, never wanted to hold a kind of job where I just went and sat in the office. Didn't really get to get out and move around a lot. So, this is a lot of fun. You know, you get to make a difference. And you get to make people happy. Definitely upset a lot of people. Positives I try to focus on for the EMS is this call they handle an overdose. And they request that they always request that we respond on overdoses. Honestly, Looked like the other officer came out with a 
pill bottle? Was it too much of a prescription? Suspected narcotic. Uh, so he'll be taking that. Likely it'll get tested if it comes back positive for anything. We'll go from there. Somebody called 911. It's hanging, hanging on the side of the building. We'll just go in here and ask about that name or safety stand. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get away. 
back to sleep. You trying to go back to sleep? Why'd you call 911 then? I'm just going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. All right, get some rest, man. All right, sleep it off. Cause don't burn the hotel down. Okay. All right, all right, buddy. Thank you, bud. Yep. So basically, he was just intoxicated. He's fine. He's gonna sleep it off. And Deputy Dobson will be glad to take it from here. Okay. Yeah, he's just drunk. Yeah, he's just drunk. What's that? He called us. Oh. Hey, don't uh, Good, how are you? Good. There's a first aid kit behind you there in case something. Okay. And then, and then one the of Okay, that's the dogs. That's cool. We have a dog with us, huh? My name is Deputy Dobson. I've been in law enforcement for seven years now. You've been with Berkeley County the whole time? I was been with Berkeley County going on five years, and I was at Martinsburg for about two and a half. Okay. How different is it? Is it a little bit, a little bit wilder in the city, or? It's a bigger jurisdiction. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really not much different. I love doing drug work. That's, that's my, what is it, actually, drug, right? drug work? Drug work, yeah. yeah. That's what I like to do the most. And then, uh, I don't know if I have a leash tape or not. I mean, I used to be a training Thank officer, so... I feel like I was pretty decent at just about everything. So you were you were responsible for training some of the guys? Yes. That's, that's pretty cool. I had to put a deuce down a couple weeks ago. That would be strange. <laughs> yeah. I hit the frickin' swing and it was just like in the middle of the road and wouldn't move. Yeah. I try to walk over and down the road and gets all defensive and tries to attack me, so. That makes it a little bit more fun. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you for coming. We sure. appreciate it. <laughs> Everything's fine. Was it accidental alarm? Yeah, they had the key pop by. Mm. Got a DUI earlier. Got passed out in a truck up in Fort Waters, and he's just. But not, not uh, driving crazy. Just passed out in the vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heroin. Oh, okay. I always feel weird about doing this show because it's like I don't want there to be too much excitement for you guys, but at the same time, you know, if you did have a shootout with a motorcycle gang, it'd be great <laughs> for my show. <laughs> Definitely get you some ratings, <laughs> right? Kind of get a different perspective on this on law enforcement, or yeah, for sure. You know, we've gotten a lot of good feedback since I've taken over because right around the time I took this show over, they were canceling cops and live PD, right. you know, because of the, the riots and whatever issues. So we picked up a bunch of their viewers online. Oh, really? And, uh, you know, a lot of people are happy that there's, you know, still at least a law enforcement show going on. Yes. Builds a bridge with the community as far as knowing that police officers are human. That's for sure. I wish we did like a recruiting video, like a, like a 30 second recruiting commercial or something that we could put on our Facebook and stuff. 
reserves don't get paid, do they? It's just volunteers. Yeah, they're not getting paid. 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 I was surprised to find that out a couple weeks ago. The reserve program is, especially for somebody that wants to get into law enforcement, it's a very good opportunity to, because I mean, they get to ride with us. I mean, they get, they do their own special details and stuff, help with the fair and that kind of we stuff. Apple right harvest. Apple harvest parade and all that stuff. And it's a really good opportunity to learn the job. I think right, it definitely here. gave me a leg up. Started. I used to have some books and stuff about local ghost stories. I tell you what, I never believed in them until I went to college. And then I'm like 100% sure <laughs> that I saw yeah. one night in one of the buildings. I went to Glenville State and it was pretty wild. I'm neutral on that one. I haven't seen any definitive proof, but I've I've seen some weird stuff. It, I tell you, it, it, I mean, it was a perfect silhouette of a woman with her hair, I mean, like, like an 1800s type gown, like standing in the window seal, and it was just freakiest. It was there for like 30 seconds and gone. And it was it was just weird. It was I don't know. The lights flickered a couple times, and there was a TV crew that came from France. France. staring like that blank stare <laughs> like like from the office kind of deal and then I would come around and stand in front of him get him laughing <laughs> basically the markings on this car the lettering is, is made so that it blends in most of the time, right? It just looks like a black car, but, but then if you shine a light on it, it, it just looks like a black car. It looks like a normal uh, cruiser. Right. Now, is that because being the canine unit, yeah, that, you want to blend in more for like drug busts and things, or? It, I mean, it, dep it depends what kind of police work you want to do. I mean, when they ordered this car and the other uh, canine handler's car, they ordered these look the same or whatever. And that was prior to the current sheriff who uh, these style cars. I mean, they both, they have their, I guess, pros and cons, the marked ones and unmarked ones. I mean, if you want to, yeah, what people know they're obviously with a marked car and everything. Um, yeah, this is convenient when you're trying to do discreet and let your presence be known. You're trying to watch, you've got maybe got like a drug tip or something or a house or a specific, a specific hotel room or something like that. So you might want to just try to like blend in. Yeah, you get a little bit more stealth. Right. You can sit there. It's nice not have a light bar on top. You know, you could, you know sometimes you'll get information that there's drug deals or something like that going on in some of the parking lots and you blend in just looking at like another, you know, civilian car. So, there's definitely its pros and cons to it. Got a call for, uh, from a 911 saying that the VA crisis hotline received a call for a male not threatening suicide, intoxicated on vodka. Threatened to shoot law enforcement. They should arrive on scene. Um, How often do you get scenarios where you've basically been threatened up front should you arrive? Uh, it's actually usually when there's suicidal 
calls, depending on yeah. uh, suicide calls are probably the most. Sure. People threaten suicide by cop. Sometimes people call and say, "I feel like hurt myself," or if they if they make actual threats that they're going to hurt themselves yeah. and stuff. There's evidence of it that they're going to hurt themselves. Then they're required to go with to go to the hospital. Now, if they're just, just telling their friends they're depressed or whatnot, and just and that friend calls and says, "Hey, I think this person's suicidal," we can't force somebody to. Um, go to the hospital, but if there's actual like an actual threat being made that they actually want to harm themselves, then we, uh, there's protocols in place where the medics come and ask some questions and everything and take them to the hospital where they'll see a doctor. trying to get me into a rehab okay. place called the retreat. Were you upset when you called them? Well, yeah. 
I mean, that, just, uh, that's, I mean, that makes sense. It's kind of what the information we got. That's all why we got this happening. Yeah, that's why I'm upset. I mean, yeah. we lost two, two kids. Yeah, I if you're not suicidal, you don't want to hurt yourself. No, not one's horrible. You don't want to get off of it. No. You might sign something for us saying that you don't want to get a witness? Yeah. Sorry if I make you upset. You're fine. I'm not that myself. Okay. I don't want to see another person take their own life. You know what I'm saying? At least one to a day. I was in Honduras, Sierra Leone, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq. Where did you serve in Afghanistan? What's that? Where did you serve in Afghanistan? What province? Oh, tricky day. I was a candle. It's a pretty dangerous place. It is. I lost 19 friends. Young guys like you, you know what I mean? Yeah. See how many injuries I have? I've been shot nine times, like half reattached. I remember the last time I was here. Yeah. Right. Hey, so I gotta ask. You have a fellow going to sit right beside the cage. Right? Is right. that where it normally sits? Why did you have it out? Because the information we got was that you might try to have law enforcement go. And the gun sitting right there, I mean, I know it's a hell of a gun, but that thing looks real. No, it looks real. I didn't. But I mean, they gave you that door and pointed it at him. Well, I, I, was was I, just, shot. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't your attention. No, 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 Okay. That's how to check me. I want to make sure you're doing that and you're being honest with us. I am being honest. You have a good evening, sir. Thank you. Yep. They all talked to medics and he refused treatment. He 10 4 there. Shale, yes, 10 IE will be in route to the unconscious female. Hitting two is what sounds like an overdose. Thank you, Dermot. Little Caesars. Little Caesars always overdose on cheese sticks.
madness is beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like when the medics got there, she woke right up. So it's hard to tell if she was that ever dosed or not. Her pupils are a little bit pinpoint, but she says she's on Suboxone, which is obviously a for getting off of opiates, right? Right. I mean, it really doesn't help you get you off of it, which is kind of slow. withdrawals, in my opinion. Uh, but, I mean, they had enough probable cause to search the vehicle. Um, didn't look at anything I mean, to prove that she had overdosed or had anything. I mean, there was no, no paraphernalia or anything like that. So I think he's with get her information back, make sure he doesn't have any warrants or anything like that. Seem really nasty. Yes, they are. Yes, they are.
Okay, it's occupied three times. You get him out? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that it was in there. 
Okay. Here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to detain you while I finish searching through this bag. I'm not saying you're going to jail, but we're going to be detained. That's what he said. It, it wasn't gabapentin, it was heroin. Is it gabapentin's for nerve damage, isn't it? So we're searching the vehicle.
one of the deputies has a vehicle fleeing from him right now. 181 started on oh, Hillsville wow. Road. So we're gonna try to get caught up to him in case Perfect. they stop and put bail. Yeah. And we can use the dog in case they put bail. You got an alert on that one, right? Yes, the, the, and an alert on the other one as well. Oh, really? Yes. Just when he smells yeah. something, then he sits down. Yeah. Is that what's that? Yeah. yeah. When, it, when it indicates on an odor of a illegal substance, they're trained to sit. They used to be trained to call at that spot, but it was causing too much damage to the vehicles, obviously. So now we train them to sit to the area where the source of odor is coming from. He's headed south or north? North. North. Yeah, they're probably crossing the line right now. They lost him in that construction zone there. The Maryland State Police was right in close by the line, so hopefully he'll be able to intercept the vehicle and get it stopped.
mask will walk right through. I'm not trying to be too Okay. be too extraneous, okay? All masks will cooperate. You don't want to cooperate with the gentleman? I'm going to cooperate. Yeah. 
in the distance between that vehicle and us. So the most he admitted to was 80 miles per hour. So like, and I don't have a radar, so I uh, wrote him for the 80 and what he admitted to. So no. you get a lot of people that don't follow directions. I would think most people would would uh, as soon as be as cooperative as possible. You know, just a nature of the beast. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a common misconception that police officers need a reason for somebody to step out of a vehicle, and you don't. And you stop a car, it's illegal detention, you're detained, for it's a temporary detainment. And there's Supreme Court rulings that uphold that there's no reason necessary for a police officer to have to step out of a vehicle. The police officer has to step out of the vehicle, you gotta get out of the vehicle. As part of the investigation, there's, you don't have to have probable cause, reasonable suspicion, or anything like that. Somebody step out of the car. Is that what it was? He was mad because you asked him to step out? It, I, nine, nine times out of a hundred, I'm on the interstate. I have everybody step out of the car. One, if somebody rear ends my car, him and I are out away from it. Kind of deal. It gets him. It's, I'm able to hear him better. He's able to hear me better because of the volume of traffic. What's the dog's name? Pete. Pete? Mm -hmm. <laughs> P-I-T. It was originally Pit. But they didn't want a dog in West Virginia named Pit. Okay. <laughs> so we dropped, we dropped one of the T's and I guess put an accent on the I. <laughs> <laughs> 